throw my life. You know what I'm saying? I just, whatever's going to be, it's going to be. And just like I told my doctor, and it was weird because talking to my doctor, he's, a, you know, he's Mexican-American like me. <laughs> but <laughs> when I told him, I said, hey, you know, because he mentioned that I could have chemotherapy and it may give me an extra two months on my life. But, you know, when when what, struck, what, what was it? I mean, what what they diagnosed you with again? A, a what? AML. A, AML. And that's acute. Acute myeloid leukemia. Acute. It's a blood cancer. Acute myeloid leukemia how, mm-hmm. how how long ago was you di- uh diagnosed with that uh i'm in month seven how long ago yeah. it's been almost seven months now so yep. so shortly after the interview oh my god so yep. but, how, how long did the, how long did the doctor say that how well, seven to nine months what? And it was it was kind of I didn't even know what like when he said it I didn't know what it was so I had to google it and and it was weird because there was a baby this actor his baby died from it and she just turned 8 months old and I was like damn you know this is really you know bad but what got me to the doctor is the fact that my good knee and my joint, my good joint, we'll call them, because I got a bad right knee and a bad right hip, uh, they were hurting me. And I was like, well, what is going on? You know, this isn't, and I was tired. Mm-hmm. And when he mentioned the AML before I had the, uh, bone marrow biopsy okay he said to me um that you know it was nothing to worry about daddy do 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 and i told him listen something is wrong and i'm not leaving till you look at it you know investigate it do something and if you're not willing to do it just let me know and i'll you know call my doctor in missouri and then I had my doctor in Missouri look over everything that my doctor did up here, and he conferred that, yeah, that was what it was. And um, the bone marrow biopsy already confirmed what I knew because um, I had done enough research on the AML that I knew that it uh, – you know, was already in my bones. So you... That's why my knees were hurt. So... My joint. So I, I, I see, like I said before, I, I, I see you back in the truck. Yep. So you so you went back to the company where you was at or you had a new company? Oh, hell no. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I... No. After that weekend in Montana, no. <laughs> He <laughs> said, "You yeah. said no to that one, huh?" I said, "Man, you know, when I came back to give them their truck, and I had already, you know, told them I quit. I came back, went in the office, and when I came back out, they had booted the truck. Like, who does that? Like, I already quit. What are you doing? I brought your stuff back to you. Mm-hmm. You." you like I made no money and now I'm working for a guy he's got five trucks he ordered three more and once these trucks get to 300,000 he gets rid of them but he maintains them they're brand new trucks so you so I don't ever break down so you rocking out with a with a private owner Uh, he's he's familiar with your situation yeah, yeah, yep, 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 yeah. We, we've we had a couple go-rounds because, listen, I'll tell you, I've never 
you know, messed up anything. Mm-hmm. But one day I told him, I said, listen, I'm tired. And he was like, I mean, not to just go pick the load. And I'm like, I'm tired. He's like, can you just go get this load? And I'm like, okay. So I went and got the load. I made it in the truck stop entrance. And I don't know what happened after that. I know that I woke up and the rim was bent. So I curbed, what I did is curb the curb. Mm-hmm. And I bent the rim and, and flattened the tire. So, you know, I went, you know, took a picture, told them, I, you know, hey, this is what happens when you, when you know, tired. deprive someone of sleep. Right. I said, stupid shit happens, and it's stupid preventable shit. But I just let, you know, I owned my mistake because it was partly my mistake because I should have told him, hey. End of discussion. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Plain and simple. Exactly. But what he 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 was trying to drive the truck from his twenty dollar office depot chair. <laughs> That's what I told him. I said, "You tried to drive this truck from your twenty dollar Home Depot chair." And I said, "I told you from the get go. I'm not to be micromanaged. Give me the load, and I know what to do after that. Right? Right. I know. You know." And I said, have my pickups been late? No. Have my deliveries been on time? Yes. I said, okay, what are we discussing? Nothing. (laughs) The fact that I I need to go to sleep? We ain't discussing shit. I said, you know, and I told him Friday because he was still hung up. And, you know, when he met me, he told me something, and it struck me as odd. But now I know because he told me. Before you blow up, come and talk to me. So I told him I talked to you four times. I said, now after this load, I'm going home. I said, I'm not going to do this. I said, death will come in time. But I said, you're not going to steal what happiness I have. I said, some people do this job because they enjoy it. And I said, I'm not going to allow you to rob me of my happiness. That's what's up. I'm not going to allow you to make me miserable. None of that. So he was like, okay. He didn't bug me all weekend because he knew. I, I, Cause I told him, listen, where I'm going, you don't need a CDL. Okay. <laughs> you just need to ask God for forgiveness for whatever you, you may have done in your life. That was against the book, and and you know you're good. So you. So when I told my doctor, mm-hmm. you know, he and he offered me the chemotherapy, right? Right. It it didn't make much sense to do the chemotherapy to because me. you was already accelerated, right? Right, right. I was already, uh, you know, there's there's no way. It's it's the worst form of cancer. There is no cure. Period. So I didn't want to be puking my guts out. And I had had my friend who had colon cancer. He's a truck driver and he wanted to get back on the truck, see if he could do the job. And I saw what they, you know, he did chemotherapy. And I, I did, I, after seeing him, I was like, oh no, you know, I'm going to spend my days on my terms. So I told my doctor, I said, listen, I said, either you got two feet in with your faith in God or you got two feet out. You can't have one in and one out. Exactly. And I said, I'm putting both feet in all the faith in God. And that's what, that's where I'm going. How's, how's your, how's, how's your family uh, accepted this? Well, you know, I, I'm a widow, so um, my kids don't know. I haven't told them. Um, we as parents, we're in a tough position because our job is to protect them. In right. time, they're going to hurt. So I don't need to hurt them and then 
them get hurt again. So I just kept, I kept it to myself. My kids have no clue that I'm, I mean, they know that I have been sick, but they don't know how sick, you know, how bad it is. Yeah. Okay. And the doctor keeps on being like, I mean, after I think it's time, you know, you take the edible, you know, cause I don't smoke cause I have asthma mm-hmm. and I don't like to smoke anyway, but, um, like cancer is a different type of pain. Yeah. It's not like the pain from chronic pain. It is a little more severe. And here I am just like, you know, Hey, I'm going to just, uh, grin and bear it. And I've, it's worked one, one day I almost called the paramedics. I was like, Oh damn. Cause it felt like it was a Charlie horse, but it felt like it was just the weirdest thing. I can't even like a Charlie horse, but it just got tight, 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 and it wouldn't let up, and I couldn't get rid of it. And I was like, what in the hell? So half the night I was up, but so far I haven't had to resort to that yet. Well, you you, um, you 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 looking good. You driving good, you know. You doing well, you, you know you you like you said you 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 going you what you doing right now is that you going out on your own terms. So right, but saying, here's the thing: if I wasn't on this truck, I'm telling you, it I, been I'll hard. be dead. Yeah, I'll be dead because I I would have, and and I don't meet I don't quit many things in life, you know. I don't, but I, I'm just a realer person than most people can handle because I'm like, hey, you know, like my friend last week, for example, she was like, you don't understand. I was sick all week. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, you don't understand. I'm out here driving an 18 wheeler and I'm busy trying to die out here. But OK, you're sick. And we're talking when you compare your sick of, I just got pains like menstrual cramps to my sick, you know. There's no I, I just don't. Right. I mean, I don't, you know, I have to do what I have to do because as a trucker, we don't have nothing to fall back on. We don't get no pay if we don't work. Mm-hmm. There, that, that isn't, you know. And at the end of the day, I still have to do what I have to do. And I, when I'm out here, I'm more focused on working, you know, than I am of uh, anything, you know. So, I'm, I'm just in my element. Like, when I'm out here, I know I have problems like anybody else. But when I'm out here... I can solve a majority of those problems because the road gives you clarity, if that makes sense. Now, you know, now you said that you didn't uh, tell your kids yet, but are no. you, are, you know, why you out here doing, you know, doing the damn thing? And I definitely, definitely commend you for it. Are you, uh, you, you already took care of uh, things, you know, for, you know, yep. for when the time yep. comes? I, I, yeah, I, uh, huh. You know, a few people know my plans, but yeah, I've already, my affairs are in order. They have been order, in order since I was 20. So that part of it, I, you know, I just updated the stuff, you know, but, um, I, um, have, I, <laughs> my casket is, is somewhere in limbo. Okay. Mm-hmm. I ordered a special casket. Um because it's one of the caskets that you know they'll airbrush it, special paint it. And I had them airbrush it. Oh my god, wait a minute. Hold oh, on. Don't don't worry about it. I, I can um, hear you. I can hear you. You good. Uh 
I had them airbrush each one of my kids' name, name, and like you know how that you have cherub angels. So I have seven boys and one girl. So the seven boys have a little blue banner with their name on it, and then my daughter has a pink one, and then I have an angel, of course, and. I don't know where my casket is. I haven't got confirmation. Like, it's stuck in shipping limbo. And the reason I ordered a casket in general was because if you order it from somewhere other than the funeral home, it's cheaper. you're not right. It's cheaper. Um, so that's why I ordered it that way, you know, and I wanted it my way, you know. And I've got all that done, all that, you know, and the ironic thing is, you know, I don't celebrate Christmas, but I'm not a Grinch about it. And I uh, decided this year everybody would come. And, you know, I'd have Christmas my way. Hey, you know what? I, I really do appreciate you reaching back out to me and um, and giving me this because, you know, I, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I definitely, res I definitely respect you as a driver, you know, and I commend you for the strength that you're doing right now because, you know, a lot of people that, you know, a lot of people, that had cancer, you know, they pretty much laid up and just withered, withered on. You, and you're out here right. doing, you out here doing what you love to do. And you, you figured like, hey, if I'm going out, then I might as well, you know, go out. Go out on my terms. Exactly. And You know, um, and I don't, I don't think about it because honestly, I'm at peace. Like, if I was to die tomorrow, I'm at peace. Um, the only thing I have that bothers me is the fact that I'm not, you know, I, I wanted to get married again. And I don't, I don't have some, somebody that I would marry you know, because I'm by myself. I'm not, right. you know, in a relationship. And when you try to be, I tried, I was with somebody for a bit. And, you know, once I told them I was sick, they were like, okay, you know, I'm going to, you know, stand by your side, da, da, da. And they just went ghost, like ghost. Wow. And uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, the person called, and I still have no reason. Like, it, it just makes you think, like, oh, my God. You know, um, am I not good enough? Like, you're short enough. You know, like, they just don't think you're good enough. What is that beeping? Uh, that's a very good question. I hear it. Hold on right quick. No, but um, it made me kind of feel like, okay, you know, honestly, like, he made me feel like, well, fuck her. She's dying. I don't want to, you know, like, you loved me before you knew I was sick. But now that I'm dying, it's like, so... It was serious. I mean, we talked about marriage and everything, and that that bothers me because I I wanted, you know, that was one of the things that I've always wanted, and I know I'm not going to have that, and I don't want to just marry somebody because I want to be married before I die. I want to marry somebody for the right reasons. And would you would you would have known? this 
if it wasn't for COVID? Well, that's funny. Um, had I not kept on listening to my doctor about him, because that was the number one thing was fatigue. And he kept on saying, oh, it's long hauler syndrome. And finally, when it came that two-year mark, and then, like I said, my, it was hurting for me to walk, literally. And I, I was adamant at that point. I was like, no, you need to test me for different stuff because something is going on. I said, I know you don't believe me. You're, you know, a typical man, but a woman, we know when our baby's sick before the doctor tells us. The same thing, you know, we just have that intuition. And they think that we're crazy when we're talking it, but I I should have been adamant because there, there were things, you know, like I said, who needs to sleep 10 to 12? Sometimes I need to sleep 14 hours. I wake up and I feel like I just never slept. And he just kept on telling me, oh, it's long hauler syndrome, you know. And because he was a doctor, I was like, okay, you know, you know more than me to a certain degree. So I'm just going to roll with it. And I rolled with it when I shouldn't have. I, but even so, let's say I would have caught it in the beginning, it still would have been the same outcome. Right. Because if you do the reading on AML, it, it's the worst. It's so aggressive. And the funny thing is, now he's willing to give me anything. Like two years ago, I was asking him for weight loss surgery. Mm-hmm. Okay. He was like, no, nah, I'll try go to a nutritionist. And I would tell him, Eating is not the problem. That's not the issue. And he was like, okay. Then uh, for a breast reduction, because if I lay on my back, I can't breathe because I'm weighted down. You know? And now all of a sudden, okay, I'm going to refer you like, what's the point? Why would you refer somebody? Oh, my God. Oh, don't worry about it. I, I hear you. I hear you. I you said, good? Why, would you, why would you refer somebody to get that surgery when you know I'm going to die anyway? So right there it tells me that at this point he's trying to make me a dollar sign. You know what I'm saying? That is not who I am. I am Aminata. I am not your dollar sign. And that kind of hurt my feelings because, you know, I mean, you find out, like, things are cruel. Just like the guy that I fell in love with, you know, he just ghosted me. Like, who does that? Hmm. Like, you ghost me? Inconsiderate guys. (laughs) And... and, (laughs) And not only do you ghost me, I also got my doctor trying to say, oh, well, hey, guess what? He could go do your titties now. <laughs> like, does it, it doesn't make sense. Like, what's the point of me getting weight loss surgery and my titties done now? And you only it, have, it, it, and it just, you, you only have a limited amount of time. Right. It's crazy. It's well, so crazy. Like, you I, know. I see you. I, I see you driving. So where are you heading to? North Carolina. North Carolina. We're, we're at in North Carolina because I'm right here. Stanford. In, because I'm right here in South Carolina. So. Oh wow, Stanford! I'm, I'm one state ahead, above you, or below you. <laughs> right? North Carolina, I'm, South Carolina. I'm headed to Stanford, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And then I'm headed to Columbus, Ohio. After 
or Aberdeen. Aberdeen, South Carolina, I think I meant it. No? Okay. Is that North Carolina? I believe so. Is that so. North I believe so. Aberdeen is North Carolina, right? Okay. And then after yeah. that after that you going you heading back up to you heading up to Ohio? Columbus, yeah. See, I'm out here. That's another thing. I'm out here till the twenty second of December. And then I'm taking two weeks off. Okay. Because it's getting closer to the time that he says, you know, right. That's going to happen. So I want to make sure that I take that two weeks because by December, December will be eight months. Then you'll at least be with your family and everything. So I want to make sure that, you know, I can't obviously plan my death, <laughs> but I... You would know, you know what I mean? With If you take two weeks off work, you'll know when it gets closer to time because you know, just like every day I know, you know, I have little things that are changing and I know like, you know, before my chest didn't bother me so much laying on my back, you know, mm -hmm. and I've always, always had 40 triple D so it's nothing new but lately the weight of it is bothering you to lay on right to lay on my back I can't do that like I can't breathe it's like something's on you know crushing me and it's the weight of my chest and like I said I'm, I'm gonna die with these boobs because there's no point in getting the surgeries at this point. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just going to roll with it, but I'm just putting all my faith in God and whatever's going to be is going to be. But one thing I'm not going to do is live my life in fear. I'm not going to, you know, I don't fear death. You know, there's some days like that day that I thought I was going to have to call the ambulance. That day I thought, oh, man, I'm going to have to call the ambulance. And I was begging. I was like, God, if there is a God, please put me out of my misery because I can't. I can't do this. And I stayed up for half the night. And finally it let up. And I was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'll be okay. You know, and then I just tell myself, and this too shall pass, you know. It just, it is what it is, but I'm not going to live my life in fear. Exactly. Never. I'm going to be happy. I'm I'm a good driver, and, you know, I do my job, but I'm to the point where I want peace, harmony, and if, and and no toxic people. And if I can't have that, then I, I'd just rather you stay away from me, you know? Well, I am glad that uh, that, that you reached out to me tonight. Uh, I'm glad that I was still up to uh, to accept your I know, uh, call. I've seen you. You never, so, you, you know, I never see your videos anymore. I see them once in a while. I'm like, oh, okay. And I'll get to watch them, but well, I, I mean, I don't. Excuse me. I am. I, I'm. I'm just glad that you was able to give me. You know that that you thought of me. You know to you know to call me up and and give. You know I'm. I'm kind of praying that this is not the last time, but I am. I am oh. thankful. I am thankful and blessed that you was that that you thought of me to give me a call to at least you know give me a chance. Well, I don't to... forget. I don't forget people that are good natured. I I I try to you know, like I told my people that I invited for the holiday. If I invited you, it's because you mattered to me. And 
you know, I don't know if this is my last holiday, but whatever I do every day, I try to do it, you know, in a good manner. And that's all I can do. I can't do nothing else, you know. I can only do what I can do. I can't control mean-spirited people, but I can choose to not be around them. You you matter to me more ways than one. I mean, number one, you're you're a truck driver for starters, so thank you. You know, this is a thankless job, but I thank you for for what you have done. And number two, you're a female, and you're out here doing, you know, you you're out here doing, uh, you you out here doing what a man could do, probably do it better. So I appreciate. Well, you I ain't for got that. nothing on my record. Do you? No. <laughs> 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 no. So. Even that, like said, even that you, mess up the other day, that didn't go on my record, you know, and ha- just like I told him, you know, thank God it happened in the truck stop, you know, because mm-hmm. if it would have happened somewhere else, you know, if the popo would have got in, oh, I, that, that would have ended it for me because I would have, I would have told him, hey, you can find your your truck at mile marker I don't give a fuck because I'm going home <laughs> you say mile marker Cause I don't other, give a fuck <laughs> yeah because the other day he told me he said well you know if you abandon the truck listen what don't you understand I'm not married to this CDL so what is worse than death nothing so what are you going to take from me a CDL, okay, I still have a license, and I was making money before you bitch, and I'll make money after you. Exactly. So you don't have nothing on me. I'm not one of those drivers you can threaten, well, if you dump the truck here or trailer here, you know, load abandonment, and okay, <laughs> next. It's like, bye, Felicia. <laughs> like, shit. I'm I'm a different driver. I you know you're not gonna sit there and bully me like that, and make me feel guilty. And now he leaves me alone for now, but I don't know. He get, he did give me another load, but he left me alone. So we'll see how long that lasts. Because if that don't last, and he starts that micromanaging again, I mean that's gonna have to go home. Cause that's too much stress. And you don't on need somebody. all that, right? And I don't need all that. And and just like I am probably the realest person you'll meet, and the most honest. And I, I'll tell you in a heartbeat that dick ain't all that thick for all that bullshit. <laughs> so I will walk and take my stuff and go. i have just it's not worth it. Like at the end of your life. That's when you learn how valuable something is. And it, it's messed up that it took me this to get to understand that, hey, once you're dead, you're dead. So make make every day count and make, you know, do it with a good heart. And I try, you know, I've tried to reach out. This is how good I am. Even though he ghosted me, I still tried to reach out to him to say, hey, we're good. You know, I forgive you for whatever you've done. We're good. Now, whatever you've got going on, that's between you and God now. But I try to make it, you know, if somebody does me wrong, I still try to extend the olive branch and be the bigger person. But I mean, what people don't see is the nighttime, you know? Everybody sees that, oh, you got a home, beautiful home, beautiful cars, all that. But that don't mean shit to me. Because if you don't got life, you don't got nothing. So... 
I'm just going to, you know, I try not to dwell on the bad and just live good and simple. I'm only out here because I'm like everybody else. I have, you know, the bills aren't going to stop just because Aminata or LaShawn get sick. They, they don't discriminate. They're not going to stop. As much as I love them to stop, they're not going to stop. Nope, they're definitely and not. I'm a strong, I'm a strong, independent woman, and I'm going to do what I got to do, and that's what I'm doing. I'm not going to, you know, think about, you know, I could be at home saying poor, pitiful me, but I'm not, and I'm not going to do that because my happiness is right here. This is where I'm happy. 